Good morning. It is 8.26 a.m. on Tuesday, March 30th, 2021. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. So, um, feeling better than yesterday. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have to spend all day feeling quite as bad as I did in the morning. Um, I'm still a little bit, like, messed up. Like, uh, I felt like I needed to uh, take uh, a Tylenol or excuse me, an ibuprofen PM last night again because I was, you know, worried my uh, sleep schedule was going to be messed up, but I'm still feeling a little bit of lingering effects from that. Uh, ah, that's what I say. Um, I did watch a couple of movies yesterday. Uh, proceeding to watch some of the Oscar-nominated movies as part of my annual Oscar marathon, even though this year's a little weird. Uh, but I watched uh, Minari, which is nominated for uh, a number of things, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actress, and Best Screenplay and Best Score. So, a bunch fair amount. Um, in fact, actually, it is um, tied for the second most uh, nominations with Judas and the Black Messiah, uh, with only Mank uh, getting more. Uh, but I have to say, I've now seen four of the eight Best Picture nominees, including uh, Judas and the Black Messiah and Mank, and at least just for my personal subjective uh, filmmaking opinions, uh, I like Minari quite a bit more than those. Like, not, again, like, obviously it's subjective, but, uh, from, just for my own personal enjoyment, yeah, definitely my favorite of the Best Picture nominees so far. If you are not familiar with it, um, it is about a Korean-American family, um, that, uh, have immigrated you know, like they, they, they have immigrated from Korea and now in the story of the movie, they have purchased some land in rural, I want to say Oklahoma. I'm not 100% sure I remember exactly which state it was. Um, the two big cities that they would be able to drive to and they, they discuss would be either Dallas or Oklahoma City. So they are somewhere where that makes sense. Um, but, uh, so they have, uh, you know, this, this family has moved away from California to this, this rural, uh, America to try to make a go of it as a farm, but there's some tensions there because obviously running a farm is the dad's dream. The rest of his family is not necessarily that jazzed about it, but, uh, they're trying to make it work and, um, and it's basically just a family drama about, you know, what they go through. And there was some controversy about it because the Golden Globes ended up nominating it as a, uh, uh, a foreign language film. And it's true that a lot of the movie is in Korean because it's about a Korean immigrant family that largely speak Korean amongst each other. Um, but it's true also that it is an American production set in America about people, you know, who have immigrated to America. And so in that regard, it's like, that's an American movie because there are American people who don't speak English, right? Like that's, so it's an interesting uh, nuance of like foreign language movie versus, um, you know, uh, a movie made in another country, right? Like that's, you know, that's where that comes from. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, it's, uh, it's very good. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the father is played by Stephen Ewan, um, who, uh, probably most people would remember as Glenn from Walking Dead, but he's been in a number of good things. And, uh, I wasn't familiar in advance with any of the other cast, but, uh, it's, 
uh, it's pretty good across the board. In uh, there's in particular a little kid actor as the young son who um, is a pretty surprisingly nuanced and subtle role for you know a little kid, and um, and yeah, so the cast is great. I really just loved it. Um, then I also watched a documentary called My Octopus Teacher, and a little bit ambivalent about that because just in general, I'm a fan of like underwater documentary stuff and all the weird fish and octopuses and uh, cuttlefish and stuff in general. I'm a fan of, I really like those things. And so this movie has a lot of that and it's a lot of the footage is really good and it makes me happy about all of that. And so I really like a lot of that. But I will say that I feel like the filmmaker himself puts a lot of himself in the movie, which is certainly allowed, right? Like, no one's telling him he can't make a documentary about himself, because people do that all the time, for sure. But, I don't know, I guess I just like him less than I like the octopus, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, like, I don't want to be too judgmental about this guy, um, but uh, it's one thing to talk about you know, the awe-inspiring in nature and um, to be, you know, mystified in a powerful, moving way about, you know, forging a connection with the natural world and all of that. Like, I mean, sure, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, some of the way he talks about it you know, he talks about making a connection with this octopus and it being really moving for him. And it's like, on the one hand, sure, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely get that. But then he spends a lot of time talking about it as though, like, this is the first time any such thing has ever happened. And uh, it just blew him away. I, I didn't know such a thing was possible. And I'm like, really? Like... You know, man discovers empathy, kind of. And I, I have to say, like, part of the movie weirded me out a little bit in that regard. Um, but a lot of it is really good. And overall, the thing, the real message he's saying is, like, something I agree with and approve of and, and can um, relate to. But, yeah, that guy feels a little weird to me. And I, again, I don't want to be judgmental because, you know, people can be weird and still be great people. But yeah, this, yeah, that one gave me some weird feelings. <laughs> um, just how much time he spent on his own personal emotions as opposed to focusing on the sea life stuff. Um, yeah, I'm just saying this. Yeah, that's I think what I what I get at. You know, it's one thing to say, look how cool octopuses are. They're really fascinating. They're intelligent. They do all these really cool things, and they live in this amazing, uh, sort of like alien kind of world that's so different from what we experience. And it's and and in fact, um, you know, it's and it's possible to be personally moved by your encounters with the natural world in that way. And like, uh, all of that, I love all of that. But then a lot of this movie is also focused on showing him swimming through all of this stuff and talking about how he is feeling all of these emotions and he is narrating them as though nobody else has ever done anything like that before. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there, um, but I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.